yeah, we're going to get into, there's been a bunch of CTIL files, and I, we've talked about it a little bit last week, but I said I want to do a deep dive on it. I want to read them all. And guess what? Another one came out this week. And Matt Taibbi then did a whole live Enable. stream about it. And I know that you guys may or may not have watched him, but I have not gone through all of this, and I want to really go through it in detail. I've gone through it skimmed it, but I really want to understand it and, and know exactly the depths of what they did here. I have a, a pretty good idea. I, I looked over it again today. <clears throat> so the day after Thanksgiving, around Thanksgiving weekend, they come out, Michael Schellenberger publishes on his Substack Public, his newsletter and website, about the U.S. and U.K. military contractors that created a sweeping plan for global censorship back in 2018. Now, he's saying it's new documents show. I don't, I would debate whether they're even new. The, the documents that he got from the whistleblower certainly are new and they're new to him. Is this story, okay. is this story new? No. And, and we're going to talk about that too. Uh, let me actually share a screen, and you guys can see what I'm seeing. Okay, so another one. another one. Public is one of the larger substacks that is contributed to by Michael Schellenberger and several others. They did a partnership with Racket News, Indie Media Award honoree Racket News, and Matt Taibbi. Very good. Of course, they combined to publish the Twitter files along with Barry Weiss and others. And they have come back together to now publish this treasure trove of CTI League files. And they're learning a lot already. And they're going to continue to learn more, kind of like with the Twitter files. And you're going to see a lot of these drops as they're able to go through all the communications and determine exactly what happened here. So what happened is that a whistleblower made a trove of new documents available to public and racket showing the birth of the censorship industrial complex in, re in reaction to Brexit, Brexit and to the Trump election in 2016. A lot of this is not going to be surprising to very many people. Okay, but it's, hard, it's important to get through the background so that when we get to the later ones, as well as to get to what Whitney Webb has to say about this. And yes, we're going to talk about Whitney Webb. So yes, the CTIL. Yeah, which is what? The Cyber mm -hmm. Threat in, the Cyber Threat Intelligence League. All right, so here we go. A whistleblower has come forward with an explosive new trove of documents rivaling or exceeding the Twitter files and Facebook files in scale and importance. I personally think I, I didn't really pay much attention to the Facebook files. But these describe the, mm. the activities of an anti-disinformation group called the Cyber, Threat League, the Cyber Threat Intelligence League, or the CTIL, that officially began as the volunteer project of data scientists and defense and intelligence veterans, but whose tactics over time appear to have been absorbed into multiple official projects, including those of the DHS. And here's where we get into the... Meanwhile... Fascism. In the fascism at world. the cyber threat intelligence league meanwhile at the at the fascism <laughs> league because this is really where we're going with all of this all right the cti yeah. league uh, documents offer the missing link answers to key questions not addressed in the twitter files and facebook files and combined they or offer now, the x files well they they might have the x files too um I read today that that's now the new predictive programming beyond the Simpsons is to just see what they said in the X-Files. But the CTI mm -hmm. League documents, like it says, it offers the missing link, okay, that they call it, it offers a comprehensive picture of the birth of the anti-disinformation sector, what they've called the censorship industrial complex. And this is what we've been kind of fighting in this massive behemoth that is that has got its thumb on all of the independent media to make sure that we haven't that we don't grow and that our message doesn't get out and we get dismissed as kooks. Right. The whistleblower's documents describe everything from the genesis of modern digital censorship programs to the role of the military and intelligence agencies 
partnerships with civil society organizations and commercial media, and the use of stock puppet accounts and other offensive techniques. Now, there's a lot of us that are over here on mm. Twitter. We, we've we dealt with some sock puppet accounts over on Twitter. Well, and we've always accused them of being feds. This is now like direct proof that these were Possible involved, proof. directed or paid for is definitely by feds. So they have a couple of different examples here, and you're going to get into those later. Over the past year, public racket Congressional investigators and others have documented the rise of this censorship industrial complex, which is a network of over 100 government agencies and NGOs that work together to urge censorship by social media platforms and spread propaganda about disfavored individuals, topics, and whole narratives. We've seen this happen multiple times to people that we're close with, that we follow. They've specifically got after the gray zone and the people who work at the gray zone. They've used this to a point to go after Tara Reid, INN member Tara Reid specifically. Yep. They've used this <clears throat> to smear Julian Assange multiple times. So yep. the, D the DHS's cool. Cybersecurity and Information Security Agency, which is CISA, that's one of the agencies that Matt Taibbi had fudged. It was CISA-EA, not CISA itself. But CISA has been the center of gravity Nazi. for much of, of the censorship. Uh, what? Not Nazi? Uh, not, not, uh, no, no, it's, it is definitely <laughs> Nazi, so run by Chris Krebs. Yes. Um, so <laughs> I got you there. It took me a minute, but I got you. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Took a minute. But yeah. DHS's <laughs> CISA has been the center of gravity with the National Science Foundation financing the development of censorship and disinformation tools and other federal government agencies playing a supportive role. Hmm, how about that? So he now has emails from CISA's NGO and social media partners that show that CISA created the Election Integrity Partnership in 2020, which involved the Stanford Internet Observatory and other U.S. government contractors. EIP and its successor, the Virality Project urged Twitter, Facebook, and other platforms to censor social media posts by ordinary citizens and elected officials alike. The EIP is really, is really problematic in multiple ways. We can look into the EIP as we go on. But despite the overwhelming evidence of government-sponsored censorship, it had yet to be determined where the idea for such mass censorship came from. I disagree with that too because we knew this but in 2018 a stanford internet observatory official and former cia fellow renee deresta generated national headlines before and after testifying to the u.s senate about russian government interference in the 2016 of election course. yes this is it all stemmed out of russia scum. yes keith it all stemmed right out of russiagate that is correct this is what turned your brain mushy. Well, it was already mushy, but this mm -hmm. further turned it mushy after Trump mushed it a, uh, quite a bit. But what happened between 2018 and spring 2020? Well, the year 2019 has been a black hole in the research of the censorship industrial complex to date when one of us, Michael, testified to the U.S. House of Representatives at the censorship industrial complex in March. And actually, the thumbnail is from that test of testimony in March for tonight the entire year was missing from his timeline which is kind of odd because well, it's because they didn't have the data but this is pretty interesting because they started to now, now get in this leak slides video and a whole bunch of actual internal documentation slack messages how they got all that hmm, i and are they my other question is 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 this being verified and validated by anyone or anywhere or anything, aside from the fact that it's been stringently denied? Holy crap, that's so funny. I know that background. We used that background at one point for a logo brief. <laughs> okay? Sure. So you did specifically. Creating misinfosec communities yep. and how they did it, and which coalitions they're going to use, and what 
avenues they're going to use to disseminate that misinformation. But this large trove of new documents, including strategy documents, training videos, presentations, internal messages, reveal that in 2019, U.S. and U.K. military and intelligence contractors, which are led by a former U.K. defense researcher, S.J. Terp, developed the sweeping censorship framework. So these contractors co-led CTIL, which partnered with CISA in the spring of 2020. We're going to get through the first one. And then I want to show you what Whitney Webb published three years ago. And you're going to be like, oh, my God. See, how does she do this? Her Ter right. ter terps are not what I think they are in this, right? They're no, 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 not it's, tasty it, terps. It, it's not a tasty terp, and it's not a turf, and and uh, she is British, uh, Sarah Jane Terp, and British. she's 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 British. She 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 doesn't mind censorship, obviously, well, especially when it yeah. when it serves when it serves the Queen or now the King, um, but at that point it was the Queen. But in truth. The building of the censorship industrial complex began in or even earlier in 2018. Because internal Slack messages show that Terp, her colleagues, and officials from DHS and Facebook all working closely together in the censorship process. What a surprise! Yeah. The CTIL fr framework and public-private model are the seeds of what both the U.S. and U.K. would put into place in 2020 and 2021, including masking censorship within cybersecurity institutions and, and our disinformation agendas. So now they're already starting to do it, but bury exactly how they're doing it and the fact that they're, they're doing it so that they can gaslight everybody and say, what do you mean? What, we're, we're not doing this. What do you mean? Doing this? I, I don't know who's doing it. It's, it's not me. Everyone gets plausible deniability, heavy focus on stopping disfavored narratives, not just wrong facts, and pressuring social media platforms to take down information or other or take other actions to prevent content from going viral. That's what's called visibility filters. We covered this in the Twitter files. So that's one of the right. methods that they used is they would put a visibility filter on a hashtag or on a user account or on a group of users so that their tweets would basically sit in a bell jar. And I think that's what's happening to all of us. But because we spoke out against Ukraine and against what happened there, I think they put us into a jar because we speak out on behalf of Julian Assange and against what the U.S. government has been doing to extradite him. I think that they put us in a jar there and they just request they can't control what Twitter does, but if Twitter decides to do it at their suggestion, well, <laughs> that's not them doing it, is it? Really? That's that's their argument, and no, that's they how they never. say it's that's how they say it's legal, quote unquote. Oh no, they said oh, no. In the spring of 2020, CTIL began tracking and reporting disfavored content on social media, such as anti-lockdown narratives like. All jobs are essential, and we won't stay home and open America now. Hmm, who do you think they worked for? Which which party was yep. was against all of those things? CTIL mm -hmm. created Come a on. law enforcement chain. Now, what's funny is, is that in the spring of 2020, guess who's still president? Yep. But he's not in charge of every uh, organization. Yeah. Who would be president? That would be Trump. Biden? Trump? Biden did not take office until January of 2021. Trump was still in charge in the spring uh, of 2020 while they're locking people down because COVID just hit. The organization also did research on individuals posting anti-lockdown hashtags such as hashtag free California, free CA, or free Canada. I don't even know which one. And kept a spreadsheet with details from their Twitter bios. This is what I'm talking about. We got on a list somewhere or on a bunch of lists somewhere. <laughs> the group also discussed requesting takedowns and reporting website domains to registrars. Exactly what I'm talking about. So, CTIL's approach to disinformation went far beyond censorship. The documents show that the group engaged in offensive operations that influence public opinion, discussing ways to promote counter messaging, co opt hashtags 
dilute disfavored messaging, create sock puppet accounts, and infiltrate private invite-only groups. And we're going to get into the sock puppet account specifically because that shit's unbelievable. And Matt actually wrote an article all about the sock puppet stuff. Um, that'll yeah. be later. So in one suggested list of survey questions, right, CTIL proposed asking members or potential members, have you worked with influence operations, hate speech, or other digital harms previously? Holy shit. Do you find microwaving eggs just too hard? The survey then asked Why whether these... sound like what it sounds like? Right. The survey then asked mm. whether these influence operations included active measures and psyops. Takes mm -hmm. one or no one, guys. Like, this is what you guys were actively know, right? pushing. So it's Spider like... Spider-Man meme. Basically, well, no, it's not even that. It's if you can spot it, we don't want you. Because you're going to run and tell the world what we're doing. So we only want the people that are, you know, smart enough to run the machines, but not necessarily smart enough to realize what they're doing and why and who they're doing it for. Mm -hmm. These documents come to us. Here we go. Via a, ver a highly credible whistleblower. We were able to independently verify their legitimately through extensive cross-checking of information through publicly available sources. The whistleblower said they were like recruited. Hamilton 69. Well, something like that, but the whistleblower said they were recruited to participate in CTIL through monthly cybersecurity meetings hosted by the DHS. Now, this is unreal because who was who was at these meetings were private organizations and all of the security organizations. The FBI declined to comment. CISA did not respond to our request for comment, and Terp and all the other key CTIL Leaders, of course, did not respond to our requests for comment. Go surprise, go figure. Um, one person involved, Bonnie Smalley, in reply to her LinkedIn saying, All I can comment is that I joined CTI League, which is unaffiliated with any government orgs, because I wanted to combat the inject bleach nonsense online during COVID. I can assure you that we had nothing to do with the government, though. Maybe what she was involved with. No. Yeah. Oh, no. Look, they all do have I mean, white, like hat that, oper white hat operations. Like that Bellingcat lady. Well, right? Where it was like but we would we would never have worked with any oil agencies. They never I never saw any. It's like, okay. However, you know? the documents suggest that government employees were engaged members of CTIL, one who worked for CTI for DHS, Justin Frappier, was extremely active in CTIL, participating in regular meetings and leading trainings. And guess who's wow. in guess who's in that thread right there in the middle? Is that that lady Bonnie Smalley, who said Terp. that she wasn't well just underneath Terp is Bonnie Smalley, who then said that mm -hmm. she had nothing to do with the government. How? Okay, or or just mm -hmm. not completely unaware. I I don't I don't know. So, um, we've got lots of Slack messaging. This is a Slack thread and a and a Slack screenshot. Now again, Slack screenshots can be recreated, but these have been authenticated and have been verified independently, according to Michael Schellenberger. And these guys would not put their reputation on the line. And their publications on the line and their financial futures on the line, unless this stuff was verified and legit. At least I feel. Right. Maybe I'm naive when it comes to that. The CTIL's ultimate goal, according to this whistleblower, was to become part of the federal government. And that's a little scary, but that again is the literal definition of fascism when you've got your commercial, then merging directly into the governmental and then becoming one and the same. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Robert Escobar Show. Appreciate that. Hit the like button while you're here. Like, and while you're here, share it with your friends. Put it out there on Twitter or put it out there on Facebook. Twitter it doesn't really seem to help or share, but putting it out on Substack Notes, if you're out there, find me over on Substack Notes. I'm over there. There's at Indie media today. Um, 
And over on Instagram, too. But anyway. Yes, how isn't this bigger news is correct, Vicky. Uh, I, I don't know how this is not bigger news. Uh, why is because, well, part of it is that they, this actually came out quite a while ago. And that's what we're going to show in a little bit after we get through the rest of this article. But, and we're almost done with it. But records, okay, so I want to get into who's Chris Krebs. Do you know who Chris Krabs is, Reef? I mean, I know Big Man Crab, but not Chris Krabs. No, not Krabs, Krebs. But public Krebs? records and the whistleblower's documents suggest that she achieved this, which was Terp's plan to create misinfosec communities that would include the government. Okay. That was part of the mm-hmm. original plan of CTIL, right? In addition to becoming a part so of the original government. plan is. The original plan was to include the government and then lie and say that government never was involved. Okay. Uh, Well, no, 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 no. The the whistleblower is not the person that said the government was never involved. That was someone that was caught in these documents, but then replied, the Mm -hmm. only person that replied at all with any kind of a public statement to public to these guys about this lied her face off. And said that it had nothing to do gotcha. with government. When all when we've got screen caps of her slack saying how is friggin' pandemic still getting so many hits? All right. This is yeah, it's clearly political, first of all. They're going mm-hmm. after Trumpers and what they perceive to be right wingers because they were questioning the COVID narrative. Safe sure and effective. It was safe and effective. Sure the same thing. Well, yes, but primarily what their what their focus being shitlibs are, being the nanny state, they're likely not even focused on us because we don't matter to them. They are focused on Trumpers because that's what they've been whipped into a fear frenzy to be to, to be focused on. But we're gonna get into who's Chris Krebs. All right. He was then the director of CISA. He announced on Twitter in multiple articles that he was partnering with CTIL. It's really an information exchange. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, the documents also show that Terp and her colleagues through a group called Miss InfoSec Working Group, which included Renee, Renee DiResta, created a censorship influence and anti-disinformation strategy called AMIT, A-M-I-T-T. And I'm not going to get in, you know, it's the adversarial misinformation and influence tactics and techniques. Basically, it's the way to fuck with people. They wrote the manual on how to fuck with people. Damn it. By adapting a cybersecurity framework developed by MITRE, which is, by the way, a major defense and intelligence contractor with an annual budget of one or two billion dollars in government funding. So she took... This government-funded way of fucking with people from the Defense and Intelligence Department and then adapted a cybersecurity framework all right, for this censorship misinformation bureau that then she intended to become part of the government. Like, literally 1984 shit. Yeah. But they're doing it yep. to help you. And that's the other part of the insidiousness of they're this. They're definitely using what's that language in 1984? All Inksoc. these acronyms and Inksoc, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Don't you know, don't believe the eye? Don't 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 believe your lying eyes and ears. But the documents show that through a group through this group, right? That they later used Amit to develop the disarm framework, which the WHO then employed in countering anti-vaccination campaigns across Europe. Hmm. Of course. Which now they're banning the vaccines and and they're not adopting all of the shots and they're starting to hold people accountable and ask questions they should have asked three years ago. Um, Meanwhile, prisoners are still being forced to take it or their visitation rights. Here, not Overseas, yes. Yes, well, that's to protect the people around them because the shot really protects the people. It's actually also to protect the prisoners from somebody bringing it in potentially and then spreading it. And 
very it's a whole thing. I yeah, very 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 shape, very very, fa- very very shape, very effective. It has nothing to do with people's hearts swelling with pride um, about taking it, but or mm-hmm. having to be forced to take it in some cases in order to maintain their job. But a key component of her work through CTIL, Misinfo Second Amit, was to insert the concept of cognitive security. All these buzzwords and they literally developed an entire other language so that people, when they heard all of this shit, would tune out and not pay attention and be like, damn it, DTIL, what is all, th- I don't want to hear. And it almost worked on me, but it's kind of too important because it really talks about the way that these mechanisms are being used to censor out. Here you go. So, Sum total of documents is a clear picture of a highly coordinated and sophisticated effort by the U.S. and U.K. governments to build a domestic censorship effort and influence operations similar to the ones that they used in foreign countries. And once again, shout out to Whitney Webb, who in 2020 said that that they would be using the NGOs, the World um, Economic Forum, the... um, the Bilderberg group, all the people that they say are not doing what they say are doing. All of a sudden you find out they actually were doing it because they were going to be bringing those influence operations that they had effectively owned abroad and applying them domestically. And it was going to wreak havoc. She effectively predicted that that something was going to happen around the election that was going to scare the hell out of people, tear the country apart and further polarize things. But it was not necessarily going to be a coup where, which results in Trump taking over by force. Hmm. How about that? That's pretty much exactly what happened. Um, Amazing. And she said this in November of 2019, uh, 2020, by the way, right about the time of the election, Mm. just after. Sure. I got to find that footage. I, I don't know if she said it on her own show, if she said it on T Lab, if she said it on Slow News Day, or if she said it on um, Graham Elwood, which might have been the other place that I had heard it. I don't remember, but I absolutely 100% remember hearing this. Might have even been her own podcast, but some total of documents, like we said, is clear that. Terp referenced her work in the background on social media issues related to the Arab Spring. Another time, Mm. the whistleblower said she had expressed her own apparent surprise that she would ever use such tactics developed for the foreign nationals against American citizens. So they gaslit us and told us that they weren't doing this to us and that we were crazy for even thinking that they could potentially bring this back home from overseas which we knew that they were doing in Syria and in South America and in North Korea and in Russia and in Ukraine and in all of these places that they were having mass media in Israel where they've got influence operations. Everywhere we've got bases, assume that we've got some kind of an influence operation. Yeah. According to the whistleblower, roughly 10 to 20 active people involved in CTIL worked at the FBI or CISA. Quote, for a while, they had their agency seals, FBI, CISA, whatever, next to your name on the Slack messaging service. But she had a badge that went away at some point, a TERP, which is interesting also. But we're seeing like the PowerPoint documents with all of the flow charts and potentials and paths of what they might be doing in order to lay this whole thing out. It calls for trying to get banks to cut off financial services from individuals who organize rallies or events. Huh? Where do we see that happen? It calls for discrediting individuals as a necessary prerequisite of demanding censorship against them. Hmm. Training influencers. A few times too. Creating influencers to spread messages. <clears throat> Chris Richards, what? Um, no, I didn't say that, but I just said that. There's quite a few of those. The Eclectic Federal. The timeline, 
of Cease's and work. New ones popping up frequently. All the time. Um, the timeline of Cease's work with CTIL leading up to its work with EIP and VP strongly suggests that the model for public private censorship operations may have originated from a framework originally created by military contractors. No surprise there, because they can only do so much as the military, but as private organizations, there's a lot more that they can do quietly and without any visibility and oversight from government. What's more, the techniques and materials outlined by CTIL closely resemble materials later created by CISA's Countering Foreign Intelligence Task Force and Miss Dis, and Mal Information Team. And I know, I know um, James Raguski calls himself a Miss Dis, and Mal Information Expert. <laughs> In mm -hmm. generating it, not in... Raguts. Raguski. Shout out to James Raguski. There's some big thing happening with the WHO. They're having a major vote. You can submit a petition. <clears throat> and the deadline is this weekend. It may have already even passed. There is going to be some kind of a major hearing or something tomorrow. So check in on that. But over the next several days and weeks, we intend to present these documents to congressional investigators and will make public all the documents that we can while also protecting the identity of the whistleblower and other individuals who are not senior leaders or public figures. But for now, we need to take a closer look at what happened in 2018 and 19, leading up to the creation of CTIL, as well as this group's key role in the formation and growth of the censorship industrial complex. Clearly, right. Michael is not a subscriber of Whitney Webb's Unlimited Hangout, but... <laughs> And by the way, unlimited hangout. And and this is more to the article. Here is from their the hive. All right, this is another gathering tool, according to her bio on the website of a consulting firm that she created with Brewer. She's taught the data science, she's taught data science science at Columbia, was CTO of the UN's big data team. Nothing happened within the UN with trafficking or anything. I, that wouldn't have to happen and go through their servers now. I'm not saying anything. I, I'm speculating. I'm sure other people will pick that up and we'll see stories about that in the near future. Sure. She designed machine learning algorithms and unmanned vehicle systems at the UK Ministry of Defense. This is exactly who I would want in charge of identifying what is misinformation. So this is a deep dive into specifically who these people are, looking at their bios and backgrounds. The MisInfoSec report advocated for sweeping government censorship and counter misinformation. During the first six months of 2019, they analyzed incidents, developed a reporting system, and shared their censorship vision with numerous state, treaty, and NGOs. And oh yeah, by the way, they did all of this, and we're going to find out exactly how they get, how did you get into all of this? How did you get their ear? How did they start listening? On top of the fact that they funded all this and that they had people planted involved, how did they get their buy-in? Well, these are some of the charts that were used advocating for police, military, intelligence, involvement, and censorship across Five Eyes Nations and even suggesting that Interpol should be involved. Tara would certainly agree with you on that one. Shout out to our sister, Tara Reed, if you're watching. Love you, sister. Anyway, um, how to get alert, get info from alerts and take actions. They've got the plans and the breakdowns and the flow charts to do so. They called us the Hogwarts School for Misinformation and Disinformation. They were the superheroes in their own story. And to that effect, you can still find comic books on the CSIS site. Oh, my word. Funny. No, uh, yeah, funny. Frighteningly funny. CTIL needed programmers to kind. pull apart. They needed programmers to pull apart info from Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. For Twitter, they created Python to Python code to scrape. I mean, this stuff is really frightening exactly how deep they went to grab people's stuff. And then, despite their confidence in the legality of their activities, 
Some CTIL <laughs> members may have taken extreme measures to keep their identities a secret. The handbook recommends, recommends burner phones, pseudonym, pseudonymous, pseudonymous identities, basically creating a, a sock puppet, and generating fake AI faces using the this person does not exist website. We know that one. We're, we're quite familiar with that website. Yeah, yeah we do. We were going to make a show out of this website called Who Are These People? We actually did a couple of rounds of that. And man, did we have some fun with that. Who knew that there was actually like part of a CTIL project? Holy shit. In June 2020, the secretive group took actions to conceal their activities even more. Hmm, no surprise. So at first, they, you know, they're, they're, they're altering their messaging and tightening it up so that you're not knowing exactly where it came from. 